Hey my friends, welcome back for more Reddit stories. Today we have a story from the Let's Not Meet subreddit. As usual, sit back, relax and enjoy. Let's go. Attracting the wrong people. This happened nearly a decade ago now. At the time of this story, I was 15, male, 5'5 five five and 132 pounds, 60 kilo. I was a wrestler so I always knew my exact weight and kept myself extremely lean but still had a fairly muscular build. I lived in a fairly small town of 56k people and in my off season I did whatever I could to be somewhat active and outside. I had a friend, let's call him Blaze, who was really into disc golf and always asked me to come play with him and smoke a doobie while we were in the more secluded parts of the course. He was a couple of years older than me but no bigger than I was, just a not so great influence for me at the time. This small town only had two disc golf courses, one at a very public park near our middle school or one at the edge of town in an older park that was much bigger. Obviously, we weren't smoking for everyone to see, so the edge of town sealed off park it is. Little did I know that on Thursday afternoons, this park happened to be my town spot for gay men to meet and hook up in the parking lot. I live in the Midwest US, so these were not your stylish young pretty guys. It was mostly guys aged 30 to 50 who were pretty big and aggressive yee yee looking. So we finished the course and joined, walking out of the woods anything but sober. We typically either just chilled in the grass or played catch after we finished up until my buddy was more normal and ready to drive back. We noticed that there were way more cars in the parking lot than when we got there. And a lot of older guys sitting on trunks of their cars or on tailgates loosely grouped together. This very large hairy man in a tank top and his tall thin friend dressed like a biker gang member started to do the wolf whistle towards me and my friend. I got pretty uncomfortable, not because gay men whistled at me but because we had to walk in their direction and I could feel the eyes of way more guys on me than I wanted. For a testosterone filled weight room junkie teenager, I did not feel very safe here knowing there were at least 30 guys in this group and I could see in my peripheral that a fairly large portion were eyeing us closely as we walked towards the parking lot. I will make it clear that I am not a fighter and I would never intend to hurt anyone aside from self-defense but I was definitely confident in myself to hold someone off. Us two were just so outnumbered and not in a sober state of mind so anxiety made things much worse. A couple of them said some gross cat cough like things, more whistles and that wee noise that rednecks makes when they are excited about something or instigating, similar to woo but if Eric Cartman screeched it. I think they had the idea that we were some people they met online and were coming to meet up. Being high, I didn't care what was going on, I just wanted to be safe and not the center of attention. When we got closer, the big hairy man who did the first wolf whistle said something like, you think you could handle this? And I just mumbled, uh, no thanks and tried to keep walking. He yelled back, what was that boy? To which I just said more clearly, no thanks, I'm not into that. He seemed offended and angrily said, not into what? All I said was, sorry, I'm not gay. And he seemed to be offended by the word gay Again, asking me to repeat myself in a very aggressive tone. So I corrected myself and said, I'm not homosexual. Things escalated from here real quick. The man stepped forward from leaning against the truck and grabbed my wrist. He said, we can fix that real quick. Don't get excited. I didn't do some cool fight move to attack him. Just a simple wrist roll and using that momentum, a quick push off the elbow to turn him around so that he would have his back to me and I could get by without anything more. He said, touch me like that again and we will get the both of you. Another guy made his way over to Blaze who was much less the calm and chill type of stoner that I was. I can only describe what he did as one of those kicks or side steps off a wall but to that guy's chest abdomen. He started to run and yelled, fuck off effer. Very quickly, bunches of guys began to stand up from their seats on the outside of the cars and motion our direction. I started booking it for the car too and Mr. Skinny Biker Man was running right after us. Thank God it was just him running and not multiple chasing us or this story might be different. 
I was faster than Blaze, so I got ahead of him and pictured us running across the parking lot to his truck that was facing us back into a stall. I got around to the passenger side quickly with Blaze, still about 100 feet from the truck. He tried to cut to the right and make it to the drive side of his little S10, but Skinny cut him off and sent him to the left passenger side. I ran around the back of the truck as fast as I could to the driver door and Blaze slid his keys across the roof to me. I hopped in, well aware that I did not want to be driving right now in this state of mind, much less in such a crazy situation. And even more or less because someone else's vehicle. Still, without thinking, I started it and skirted out of the parking lot while Skinny banged on the bed of the truck chasing. That's not the end. A truck and a car are on their way right behind me. Skinny jumped into the car that was in the back and the chase began. Terrified and still high, I cut through the grass of the park to get to the main road quickly, thinking I would lose them that way. These guys raced right over the speed bumps and around the bends in the park road, right up to the main road, and they were driving so fast I would have gotten t-boned if I didn't smash the pedal to the floor at the right time. I'm so stressed I started silently crying while driving, thinking of how horrible the possibilities could be. Contact wearers knows that when your eyes are dry from the smoke, then they rapidly get moist. Contacts tend to drift a bit until they find their place again. This is definitely not ideal for someone with an awful vision driving twice the speed limit down a road in the middle of town. So I started turning down residential streets and waving in and out, being tapped on the shoulder by Blaze to keep my speed up because the two were still right on my rear bumper. I even made some risky U-turns and they followed right along. This chase lasted over 10 minutes of me frantically driving through the main streets, residential, back alleys, and everything I could try to get away. I was so scared that the best case scenario ended in us getting pulled over and myself obtaining a permanent record for DUI by the ripe age of 15. Luckily, a stroke of luck and surprisingly quick reflex came to my aid. Blaze yelled, COP! and pointed to a parking lot to our left when there was a police cruiser probably just waiting to catch someone speeding or running red lights on the semi-busy road we ended up upon. I whipped into the parking lot and parked a couple stalls down from the cop. The truck prepared to turn but stopped in the middle of the road. So quickly once he realized what was going on that the car following him had to swerve and pop the curb, catching the officer's attention. He backed out and the two vehicles split different ways and were out of sight before he got out of the parking lot. Never went back to that park anytime other than the mornings after that. So thankful that nothing bad came of the incident and we made it out completely unscathed. No idea what they would have done, but people engaging teenagers in a car chase could not have good intentions in mind. It was my first time in my life being sexually harassed too. You would think being in a car chase might be fun or exciting, but I just felt so powerless and like I had no control, like nothing I could do would both get these guys away from us and simultaneously not get me arrested. So that's the story for today's video. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the story and want to support the channel and I will see you in the next one.